Hello and welcome back to our 1978 Corolla Modernization Project, a project we're calling Kyrolla. If you saw our last video, you saw us get this sweet little cream puff running. Yeah! It's not great, Kai! And we discovered a few issues along the way. In this video, we're going to be fitting one of our most crucial EFI components the exhaust. So let's get started. As I was putting together the last video, it occurred to me that we didn't quite cover exactly what it is we're doing here. You see, Kai's daily driver currently is a Volkswagen R32. And while the R32 is a bad mamma jamma in its own right, it gets pretty poor fuel mileage. And on top of that, service costs are astronomical. So Kai started looking for a new daily driver. And Kai also digs vintage imports. But could a vintage import be his daily driver? Well, not really. I mean, a vintage car is notoriously unreliable, mostly due to the carburetor. Before you start a vintage car up, you have to think about how long has this car been sitting and what temperature is it outside and pump the gas a certain amount of times and set the choke and light it off and let it warm up and take it off high idle and even then the car doesn't even run very well until it's at operating temperature. So we got the idea. Why don't we take a vintage car and bring it into the 21st century? Something that Kai or his girlfriend can just get in, put the key in it, start it up and hit the bricks. Now a carburetor is a mechanical device that atomizes a regulated amount of fuel into a regulated amount of air. But basically, it works like this. And because it's mechanical, that means it has fixed adjustments, right? So as driving conditions change, like altitude and air temperature and engine temperature, the adjustments stay the same. Now, electronic fuel injection, on the other hand, uses a handful of sensors to collect data about the engine and the world around it. It then processes the data and manipulates electronically controlled components to deliver the optimum charge of fuel and air under all conditions. Now, almost every EFI system requires an O2 sensor to be mounted in the exhaust. And the factory exhaust on our little Corolla is a 4 into 2 into 1 design, which is going to make mounting an O2 sensor a little bit hairy. So we ordered a performance exhaust from Pace Setter. In addition to being some great eye candy, we got an equal length, high performance header. And you can tell it's equal length by the old bassoon test. If one of the header tubes was shorter or longer, the tone would be higher or lower and equal length header tubes deliver the best performance. But the main reason we're installing this header is to locate the O2 sensor in a position where it can receive exhaust gases from all four cylinders and be an appropriate distance away from the cylinder head. That's terrible. You know what? I might just saw all of this. We're going to test fit our new pace setter header. It looks like we're going to have to take off that 
mounting bracket down there in the bottom anyway. It's a little bit of a clearance issue. All right, so you can see we have just a little bit of a clearance issue right there on the bell housing. There's a little corner that protrudes and our header just contacts it right there at the end. And instead of denting the uh, exhaust header, we'll probably just shave that corner down a touch. But you can see from the underside, we really have nice clearance here. Have a good, you know, finger and a half gap between the collector and the unibody. And the flange is really nicely clearance too. Yeah, of course. Is that all the way? Yeah. Oh yeah, we still have plenty of clearance here. No, not all the way yet. Oh yeah, keep going. Oh, stop. Uh, go back. Keep going. So it does look like the pitman arm does touch the header just a little bit. Go back to the left, Kai. Okay, stop. Yeah, we'll have to see when it's mounted up all the way and once that little corner is clearanced, maybe it'll give us enough room, but it's not looking good. I think that we'll probably put the O2 sensor right here in this cavity. So it kind of goes up between the bell housing of the transmission, but still is in the collector's way. So we're just going to clearance this little tab on the bell housing to make sure our header can fit in there. And could just be just a touch more. I guess this is a pretty common problem with the pace setter headers on the 2TC. Um, the A40 transmission has that little tab and what we heard from BRD is that some of the A40s the tab has already been rounded off a little bit and then some of them you have to round them yourself. Sort of a choose your own adventure. But we still just have just a little bit of a touch on there. So back to the grinder. And just a touch more again. Just just a mouse fart though. It's really darn close. pretty good. I've got wiggle room and it's not contacting. So I think we got it, Kai. Man, this header looks good too. Golly. Where did that go? <laughs> Away is the answer. Mm -hmm. Look at that, Kai. Look at that room. That's Look at that room in there. That's Can't focus. That's tons of room. That's a lot of room. You could park a truck in there. <laughs> so this is where I think we should mount our O2 sensor. I think it's got a nice little cavity there between the transmission and the tunnel. So I'm just going to mark that with my Sharpie. And then we'll drill it out. So I marked the location of where I think the O2 sensor should be. And with our little bung adapter, we can see it's just a little off center. So I'm going to shift it back just a touch. But I'll center punch that point. And then we'll drill it out. Uh, now this requires a three-quarter inch hole. I do not have a three-quarter inch drill bit. In fact, the biggest drill bit I have is a uh, five-eighths. So uh, I'm going to drill it out for five-eighths and then open it up with a hand file.
O2 sensor will go in there. Or how close it'll go. Hey, you know what? I think that'll work. Right on. All right, so back in with the exhaust manifold. I'm gonna start calling this a squeeze box. You know why? Why? Because it goes in and out and in and out. Right? Yep. Oh. The way we gotta squeeze it. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you get it now? We gotta have to cut some of this <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. It's a family show over I, I'm here. Gonna, I'm gonna be editing most of it. Yeah. Way. Oh, beauty. So here's our O2 sensor in the uh, in the header. That's where we drilled our little hole. It goes nicely up in there in between the unibody and the engine. All right, so now, put our little flange on there. With our little clampies. through. We've hit our first snafu, Kai. Too thick? Uh, with too much girth. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> hmm. You know, Kai? I don't think this is going to work because our little band that's supposed to clamp our bung onto the header does not have enough distance. We can't for the life of us. I mean, it was, it was hell just getting it on, but now we don't have enough threads poking through to put our little locking nut mm -hmm. onto it. So we might just have to just weld it. Is a Toyota Corolla Superstar? Is a Toyota Corolla Superstar? So we got our little uh, O2 bung tacked in there. You know what I call that, Kai? What is it? Uh, Helga Pataki. Okay. Is so, that a joke? Yeah, it's a, it's a joke. Uh, so just making sure our O2 sensor threads nicely into the hole. Drop a wrench on the floor. And look at that. Beauty, right? Beauty. Beauty. All right, so we got our bung welded in and uh, it's time to go test fit it on the Corolla. Okay. Hopefully this will be the last time we do this. Until the final, uh, final installation. All right, and there it is in its final resting place. It uh, has plenty of room on both sides and it really looks nice in there. Like, uh, almost like we knew it exactly what we were doing. From the top side, you can see the harness kind of sneaks up between the uh, the firewall and the engine, and we can kind of ride it, route it in a nice, cool place over to the EFI. This is gonna look really nice. Is a Toyota Corolla exhaust gasket.
nice and easy. Missing, missing one here. Mm -hmm. That was gone when we got the vehicle, but man, it looks beautiful. Has nice clearance. Everything looks good. O2 sensor's happy. Everybody's happy. Are you happy? I'm very happy. Okay. Looks beautiful. Good sound, job, Garrett. Sound like a creep. I'm very happy. Well, at the end of the day, we took a pretty big bite out of our project. We got the header mounted up, and it looks great. Kai also installed some Hot Boy Flash. Here is the stock review mirror. As you can see, it kind of pretty much cover up what you can see is the back window. We're gonna do one of the best updates for this car is with a Broadway wide angle review mirror. Now this is after the review mirror has been installed. It is a wide angle concave Broadway 270 millimeter. And you see how much you can see. Voila! I, I apologize for that. Kai is a hot boy and he can't contain himself. We also deleted the secondary air injection system, or smog pump. So Kai's Corolla is equipped with secondary air injection, uh, which basically is this little air pump here. And what it does is it pumps air into the cylinder head right before the manifold. And uh, pumping air in, they hope, will uh, more effectively combust unburned hydrocarbons. Um, but because we have electronic fuel injection, we don't need this emission stuff anymore. So now we need to take that off. I don't know if you can see that, it's actually twisting the pipe. Oh wow. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is not what you're going to be able to resell on eBay. Okay. Use these to make a plug for it later on. That would actually be a real smart thing to do. What do you think? Cut it? Cut it. <laughs> Cut it! And we can pretend we're doing this too for serviceability. See, you know. You want better access to your starter motor, you know. That's really what this is about. Weight savings and serviceability. But with the EFI installed, the emissions are going to be so much better, it really won't miss it. In the next episode, we're going to keep plugging away with our EFI components and start mounting the intake and the throttle body. So stay tuned. Stop.